good to see so many familiar faces. So I'm sure many of you are probably uh, questioning this whole theme of Mogadishu rising. You have your skepticism about this Kool-Aid that we all seem to have drank, which says that Mogadishu is actually rising. And you have there are legitimate reasons to be very skeptical about Mogadishu rising. Uh, when you look at the security situation, you see a lot of soldiers around. You see a lot of security people around even coming here. Um, and uh, when you look at the, the politics of our country, this is what you see. <laughs> right? So, so you wonder. So you wonder how Mogadishu is rising after all of this. Um, uh, legitimate reasons to be very skeptical, but I believe, I believe there are reasons to be um, uh, very optimistic about, about this country. Um, recently, we have collaborated on a survey of uh, Mogadishu, which conducted a survey of 1,662 people across the 17 districts of Mogadishu. And the survey was, uh, the, at the objective of the survey was to understand the perceptions, perceptions of residents of Mogadishu on security and on justice. This is not on the actual security, but just on their perceptions of security and justice in Mogadishu. Um, and uh, what came out of that study of 1,662 people spread across the 17 districts of Mogadishu was actually even surprising to those of us um, who have been involved in that study. Um, I'll share a little bit about that. So, the study basically looked at the city, as I said, perceptions of security and justice. And uh, something like 97% of the population of the, of the entire city said that things were improving generally. And more specifically, about 68% said that they feel a lot safer this year than they were feeling last year. And when we asked them the reasons why they feel safer this year uh, compared to last year, they mentioned two things. One was the absence of an open warfare between clans and an open warfare between either the government or al-Shabaab or other groups. So people actually feel, despite every other uh, thing that you see in town, that things are actually going in the right direction. Um, for me, this was a confirmation of my own journey to come back to my country after nearly 20 years of, of being in the diaspora. This was the first scientific evidence to support the very notion that many people had about this city and uh, uh, that, that things are actually improving that Mogadishu is actually rising, and that there is a positive trajectory upward. Um, I came back, I moved back two years ago permanently to start a, a research institute with like-minded young Somali professionals who came back from the diaspora, who all had very comfortable jobs, very good jobs in where they were, but who felt that they could make a lot better contribution by coming back and by making um, tangible contributions to the country not only by joining the government, which is a great way also to make a, a tangible contribution, but also by being outside of government and being part of the civil society and making a contribution that actually matters. Um, and so, to me, this was a, uh, you know, a, a confirmation that, in fact, the reasons why a lot of young people are now coming back to this country is because they are detecting the same uh, uh, indications, the same signals that we are all um, detecting. Um, the reason why we um, established uh, the Heritage Institute was, there are a number of reasons, but I'll just point three main ones. One is, there is astonishing number of decisions that are made in this country, practically with no evidence to support. So decision makers are, with all due respect to the decision makers who are here, um, are generally in their ivory towers, making a lot of decisions, but not looking any scientific evidence on the ground to support their decisions. And so as a journalist who was covering Mogadishu and other places and coming back quite often, I've realized that decisions were made based on various other factors, a number, many, many of them that I won't go through. So we thought that that's one gap that we could potentially contribute to. Um, the second uh, reason was that there was actually no discourse, no meaningful discourse about policy issues in Somalia, particularly in Mogadishu where the federal government is based. And so we thought that's another gap that we could potentially close. The third um, reason was there was actually a, uh, a narrative about Somalia that was largely written by people who know very little about Somalia or people who have never been in Somalia, who are sitting in their ivory towers in Nairobi, London, L Washington, or wherever they are sitting, 
and who are saying um, things that you've heard this morning about Mogadishu and about Somalia in general, uh, land of pirates, land of terrorism, land of, and, and all of that. And of course, all of these things are true, but they miss the, the essence, the nuances of this country. And so we thought with an institute like this, we could tell the Somali narrative. Zahra Qurana this morning said that she's telling the Somali narrative, the Somali story through pictures. We thought we could tell the Somali story through research, analysis, sound analysis that's based on standard um, uh, research and high quality output. And so those were the three main reasons that, um, that uh, really sparked our um, intention to come back and contribute, it, contribute in a meaningful way. Um, recently, we've, uh, to confirm even the fact that Mogadishu is rising, we've just finished another polling of, uh, of Mogadishu again, a second one. This time, we're looking at the attitudes of, of uh, residents of Mogadishu on democracy and on elections. And what we found, again, is actually very, very stunning. Um, so I'm actually going backward, I realize. So, so we've, uh, we've asked a question, uh, pe people, 1,552 or something like that, people in Mogadishu, 17 districts, what their attitudes toward elections and democracy are. And this is um, the responses we've gotten. Nearly 85% um, said that elections are either very important or important um, of the people we've, uh, we've uh, um, uh, asked the questions. And uh, we've asked if, if elections were held today in Mogadishu, how many of you would vote? More than 80% would vote if elections were held today. That's how people are ready to transform their own lives. And then we've asked <laughs> Um, uh, I'll need a camel milk after this because I'm sweating <laughs> profusely. Um, so, they, and we've asked, um, there was a, a, I think it was uh, Elwat who said earlier in the day that there is, um, we are a very patriarchal society. We probably don't, uh, you know, let women participate in the political process as much as we, we would have liked them to participate. But we've asked the residents of Mogadishu if they, uh, what their views are on women's participation of the political processes and whether women should be allocated a certain number, a certain percentage of seats if elections were held in Mogadishu today. And guess what, again, 85% said that, they, that we should allocate um, uh, seats for women if, um, if we are uh, holding elections in Mogadishu. And so, yes, we are very patriarchal. <laughs> But I, but I think as a society, we are actually making a progress even um, from, from that end. And the last point to, to share about this study is uh, we've also asked them about their attitudes toward minority participation or whether seats should be allocated for minorities. And the, the numbers were very similar. About 80% said, yes, uh, uh, minorities should be participating in the political process. You might be wondering how we're collecting all of this data, and we're talking about polling and surveys, because we're actually going into neighborhoods in Mogadishu. You might be wondering how we're doing this, um, and I'll show you how we're doing it. We're actually using a, a phone like this. Exactly, actually, this one is one of the phones we've used. Um, so we're going around neighborhoods. We have questions that are plugged into the system, and we are knocking your door, and you open the door, and we say, uh, my name is so-and-so, I'm from the Heritage Institute, I'm conducting a study on uh, attitudes of elections and democracy, I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, normally we have someone from the neighborhood with the team um, because of security and other logistical reasons, but we've been incredibly excited about the, the reception of people. I think about only 3% or so have refused to answer the questions. Something like 97% of the people were willing to participate in, in uh, in uh, surveys like this, which is great. Says a lot about Mogadishu. <laughs> um, now, of course, Mogadishu is rising, but um, do we have a lot of challenges? I'm the first to say that, yes, we have um, incredible and extraordinary number of challenges in this country. Uh, we've recently traveled around the country. We've gone to uh, Galkayo, Garowe, Smayo, Baidabo, and uh, we're going to other cities. We were doing a research on federalism. And that's when you see the challenge that we have in this country um, and, and the length and, or the, uh, the scope of that challenge. One of the key things that came out of that research was the need for social reconciliation because just about everywhere we went in Somalia, people said, um, mentioned the issue of social reconciliation as a critical element to state building, as a critical ingredient to peace and stability in this country. And so while we can celebrate that Mogadishu is rising and we are you know, on an upward trajectory, I think we have 
collectively a lot of challenges to overcome. But I think we can overcome if um, we are committed to it, if we have the right tools and the right support, and I think we have a beginning. Thank you very much. Wedding. <laughs> <laughs>